We landed somewhere beautiful, and I now have this gorgeous, massive, ridiculously large Schmincke palette. And so Schmincke is probably, gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this. So you've been in watercolor land for a minute and you're in love. You feel that itch to level up your supplies, but you're not sure what brand to dive into. This is an expensive game, like no joke. So you don't wanna waste a single penny on something that doesn't feel worth it. No worries, friends, because I'm obsessed with watercolor so much that I've tried nearly every brand out there. And the ones I haven't are literally sitting in a virtual shopping cart somewhere just calling my name. I will give you the lowdown. And today it's all about Schmincke. Schminky. No, Schmink. I've been using my Schmincke palette for about four years. It originally came as a set of 48, kind of a pre-done type of thing. I got it on Amazon and friends, you can see, I love it. I love it so much. So come along for the ride with me as I rebuild and expand my original set. You may remember the rebuilding of my Schmincke palette started way back when I picked up these pastel watercolors. It's from their student grade line called Academy, but still the quality is amazing. And I decided right then and there, after painting with them, that I wanted to have one tin, one collection of all my Schmeka colors. Then I may have started collecting all the super granulating watercolors from the brand as well. And so it's high time. This is going to be a massive rebuild, friends. And I'm gonna warn you, it was not easy. Now, if you're wondering what in the world a granulating pigment is, don't worry. We are gonna talk about it just a little bit later. Time to get into the how Christy builds a palette situation here. And it's a little bit different, friends, so let me walk you through it. There is another video where I walk you through exactly how I do this step-by-step. Step. The whole video is dedicated to it. I'm gonna link it below. So basically, I collect vintage palettes. They can be any kind of vintage tin, but I tend to to search vintage watercolor tin on Etsy or eBay. And I use these little plastic half pan containers to fill up with the pigment. I pop a little tiny magnet inside before I fill the pigment. Sometimes I have to do the magnet afterwards where I tape on a magnet on the back. That's what I had to do with some of these and it's no bueno. These sheet magnets are not strong enough. So you're gonna see a little hack that I use to fix that issue because obviously once the paint is cured, I can't put the little magnet inside anymore so I have a trick for you. I definitely prefer the white half pans because I like to write the names of the pigment on one side and the brand of the pigment on the other. When you use the clear half pans if you have darker colors you can't see what you've written at all. Trust me. I've learned the hard way. Now with this rebuild, friends, things got a little extra complicated because remember, I got this set of 48 a long time ago. It came as is. I never took the pans out. I never labeled them. I'm now taking them all out, as you can see, and none of them are labeled. There are numbers on the bottom of these pans, most of them, not all, of course. <laughs> and so I'm having to search them online on different sites to figure out what pigment name I've actually got in my possession. And I'm just gonna say it was insanely tedious. And honestly, there are still two or three half pans that were never labeled. I have no idea what color they are and we'll never know and it's okay. To be honest, it's important for you to know this about me. I am not a pigment name junkie. I don't know all the pigment names that are in my palettes by heart. I know them by heart in a different way. I have kind of an instinctual relationship with them and that's just okay and just enough for me. Now, there are plenty of people here on the YouTubes that know their colors and the pigment names and all the fancy things a lot better than me. In fact, this gal was super helpful because her swatching videos were so specific and so well done. So you might wanna check her out when you have a moment. So back to those half pans that I had to figure out the pigment names for. So literally I typed in the full number, which was like 215-6204, but I discovered it was those first three numbers that actually corresponded to the color name. And let me tell you why I had to relabel all of these pans, friends, because I did it originally all those years ago in an orange Sharpie. Remember that lesson learned thing I mentioned earlier? Well, this was another one. 
Sharpies are great, but the colorful Sharpies don't seem to stay as permanent as the black ones do. So I only label now with a black Sharpie. All right, I'm gonna keep playing with these new pigments because I have to admit, I may have picked up quite a few extra new ones once I did all my cataloging and all the figuring out of things. So let's get into a little bit of a love story about Schmenka. Now, I've talked about Schmenka before, but let's get into the nitty gritty. 92 single pigment colors, which are awesome for primo, super reliable color mixing. And honestly, at the rate they put out new colors, I wouldn't be surprised by the time this video goes live that there might be more. Not kidding. 22 granulating colors, which are amazing for unpredictable results where that pigment just pulls on the page. 40 super granulating colors, and we're gonna get way more into those later. And friends, this doesn't even touch on the Academy student grade limited edition pastels and the new neons, mine are coming soon. If you really wanna see the magic of the pastel watercolors from Schmenka Academy, then check out this video linked below. It's a good one. All right, friends, are you having fun? Cause I know I sure am. This is a messy business, but man, there's something so cathartic about it. Let's get into comments. Tell me if you've tried Schmenka, if you have what you love about it. Friends, if you haven't tried it, have you planned on giving it a go in the near future? Let us know. And let me tell you a little secret about this video, friends. It's not just about Schmenka. I'm going to do comparisons with three other brands coming up really soon, so stick around. Now wait, friends, did you see that? Did you see that all the hard work I've been doing, I chose the perfect vintage tin for my Schmincke pigments to live the rest of their lives happily, and uh, yeah, I decided to eyeball, and yeah, they don't fit. I, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> now, I'm not exactly sure when I realized that I had about 60 some more half pans to fit in a 20 some half pan size space. But I will tell you this, there were definitely words. They, and they weren't pretty words, mm -mm, no. So I had to pull out my biggest palette and my Mission Gold watercolors have been living in my biggest palette, so, and they're basically cemented in the palette from many years of love and use, and so yeah, I had to embark on the journey of getting all of those out of there and cleaning the palette, and this is where things got interesting. The things we do for love. So I had to find a new palette, and it was really, really dirty, and the half pans didn't wanna come out, and I even broke a nail but we landed somewhere beautiful and I now have this gorgeous, massive, ridiculously large Schmincke palette. It's time to swatch those super granulating colors. And while I do, I actually swatch these about 17 times. Not really, but it felt like it. But friends, granulating watercolors, basically it's when pigment particles clump together and dry on the page. Typically pigment that is ground finer won't granulate as much. So for example, your quinatochrones are man-made and ground very fine. So they produce the cleanest washes. More natural pigments like the cadmiums have a more irregular particle size, a larger particle size. And so they're gonna granulate more. I think of granulating pigments though as art for joy sake makers, friends, because you can't really predict what's gonna happen. Depending on how rough your paper is, how much water you shove around on the page with the pigments, everything could change. And so it keeps you on your toes and it allows you to just be creative and not really worry about exactly what might happen because you have no clue with granulating pigments exactly what might happen. And it's a beautiful thing. So I mentioned that Schmincke has a kind of newish collection of 40, yeah, 40 super granulating pigments. And the super granulating, I think is just kind of a marketing thing, but they do granulate quite a bit. And they granulate in terms of, you see separation of color. You see the different pigments that make up that color kind of spread out and move and groove on the page. And it's pretty exciting. Now this first swatching that I did, friends, is pretty crazy. I really just wanted to see how the pigments would react under normal circumstances. So I painted inside these ovals. And then I started spraying everything down with a water bottle to really force the pigment to move around the page. So again, super messy, but it really gave me an idea of how these pigments function on the page. 
One thing to note though, this is more of a hot press paper and you'll probably notice like I did, the granulating wasn't terribly overwhelming like I expected it to be, but I suspect that's because of the paper, not because of the pigments. Now this next swatching that I did was on just a typical cold press. I used Academy paper and here are the colors as we go. Volcano yellow, and then volcano orange, volcano red, tundra orange, tundra pink, tundra violet, volcano violet, deep sea violet, galaxy violet, glacier turquoise, glacier green, glacier blue, galaxy blue, deep sea blue, deep sea indigo, tundra blue, deep sea black, haze blue, galaxy black, deep sea green, shire blue, shire olive, forest green, shire yellow, shire green, shire blue, forest gray, shire gray, forest olive, tundra green, haze brown, haze pink, haze indigo, glacier black, glacier brown, glacier I don't know what that glacier is. My notes say black. Yeah, artist brain. Forest brown, volcano brown, haze black, and we're done. It's not normal for me to actually name the pigments. I swatched these out, put them in the order that felt right to me, and then I tried to like retro figure out what I had done and yeah. So friends, that's my best guess at what colors I'm working with here. I think it's a pretty good one. And if I have a couple repeats or goof ups or screwballs, Hopefully you'll forgive me and you'll just head on over to the Schmincke website and take a look at their color chart. But the point here, friends, truly the point, not the color names, not all the things. Look at what is happening to these colors. Friends, granulating pigments like to be bullied. They like to be pushed around. I find that the granulation pops more when I really add some friction to the page, when I push more water onto the page, even when I reload my brush with the pigment and add some more back in and repeat the process. So these colors are kind of like anti-traditional use, I guess is the best way to describe it because they beg you to kind of fuss with them a little bit more than you would expect. That's kind of my take on these. You need to fuss and discuss with your granulating pigments for them to really show off. All right, it's time for those brand comparisons. Friends, I have Schmenka, Holbein, Daniel Smith, and Windsor and & Newton, and these are all the opera pink, opera rose colors. And let's try to ignore the difference in pigment color because you know, brand to brand, there's always going to be a difference in color. For example, the Schmincke Opera Pink is not my favorite Schmincke. It's not terribly bright. Anywho, I just want to kind of notice how the pigments interact, how bold they are, how easily they spread. Obviously the Holbein has that kind of creamy to transparent vibe. Daniel Smith also a little bit like mm, until you really wet it. I've, I've noticed with Daniel Smith's opera pink, you really have to get it juicy. Uh, same with Schmincke. And honestly, I've noticed that with a bunch of their colors that the re-wetting process takes a little longer. Um, but you can see that Schmenka typically doesn't have that kind of explosive nature in the color personality. At least that's my take on it. Where you've got things like Windsor and Newton, even Windsor and Newton for me tends to be a little more explosive and exciting when it comes to how it plays on the page. Schmincke has a lot of other things going for it though, a lot. Now you see I've got the Schmincke nicely re-wet there and now that color is coming to life. Um, still not as bright as the others, but again, that's not what this is about. Now let's take a look, let's add some water to the tops here and see what happens and see how they play. Lots of nice movement from Schmincke. Let's continue on with the others and see what happens. Honestly, friends, I'll be, I'll say this, it's hard to make a decision based on comparisons like this. 
some of the the usage some of the in the trenches kind of experiences with your pigments are what really gets you in the know about how you feel about a brand so that's why dot cards investing in dot cards and painting with them for a couple of days is a really good idea schmanka has a lot of personality on the page i'm gonna say once the water hits it it's probably got the most personality out of the four see how it's swirling and doing all the loop de doos in the water that some of the others aren't doing the next one that has the most personality right now is looking like Windsor and Newton. And just doing a little bit of lifting here. Holbein has always for me been a little bit more staining. Um, I don't know exactly why the science behind that. Somebody in comments can certainly tell me. And let's do another one this time with Cerulean from all the same brands. Now friends, you're gonna be startled. The Cerulean from Schmenka is Cerulean Blue Hue. So, it looks a lot different than a traditional cerulean, so just bear with me. I'm gonna apply the colors a little bit differently this time, just a little block of color at the bottom, rinse my brush, and then let it bleed up with the damp brush right to the top, gorgeous. I can see Windsor and Newton's almost looks like it's granulating, Daniel Smith's is creamier, but with a little bit of granulation it appears. Holbein, nice and clean, but creamy as always. And Schmenka, watch out for this. This is crazy. Yeah, it's bright. Woo! And oh, Schmenka, you are wild and wonderful like I know you to be. Look at how it travels on the page. It's so unpredictable, and that's what I love about it. That's honestly what I love about Schmenka. Friends, let me know if you're having a blast by giving this video a boop. That's a like. And also, while you're at it, head into comments. Let me know. Do you love granulating watercolors, are you like not having it, don't care, or yeah, let's talk about it because I know you have some strong opinions about this one. Okay, friends, as I head into indulging in this entire palette, I've got some inspiration note cards here from one of my favorite modern artists. He is a born in the Netherlands, Bas Muis. I love, love, love his work. He does photography and it's inspired by Dutch still lifes. But anyway, that's not what this is about. I wanna talk about Schmenka as I paint this final little composition here with the entire palette. Well, at least what strikes my fancy in the moment. Friends, Schmenka is all about incredible variety and surprise. And I think those are the two words that best describe this brand. You've got a little bit of everything. So for me, honestly, I have some other favorites, but Schmenka, because of the sheer variety of transparency, you've got some that are more opaque, some that are more intense, some that granulate, some that don't move a bunch on the page, some that explode like core would explode on the page. And you don't find that with other brands. And so Schmenka is probably, gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this, it's probably really close to number one for me because of that variety factor. I also love how all of their pigments play with one another. In this particular composition, I am making a point to use the pastels and the granulating and then your classic Schmenka line. And the way that they interact with one another, I almost feel like the super granulating pigments are like almost resisting a little bit, not in a traditional way, but resisting the traditional pigments. And that is making for some incredible, incredible stuff happening on the page. Variety and surprise is where I'm at with Schmenka. And friends, if you're still undecided and you're not sure which professional brand you wanna level up to quite yet, I want you to head over to this video because after this one, you'll probably be convinced. And until next time, friends, happy painting.